Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com with some more JavaScript 101. And today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, basically operators. Now operators are things like, you know, adding things. So what we're going to do is we're going to just use a lot of console logs. Console.log. So let's say I console log 2 plus 2 like you saw before. That's the addition operator. So that should equal 2 plus 2. So these are our math operators. Okay, now there's multiplication, well, there's subtraction, which is just two minus two. There is, and let me make sure you know my semicolons. Do, 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 do. Nowadays, you don't have to do the semicolons. That's kind of, you know, a thing that's no longer required, but I think it's a good habit. It makes it easier for you to read your code and tell where one command ends and when one doesn't. Okay. And then there's a, uh, multiplication which is the asterisk and then there is division so two divided by two and there's also modulus i'll explain what modulus is in a moment but that's this sign okay save so let's refresh so two plus two is four makes sense two minus two is zero that makes sense 2 times 2 is 4. That makes sense. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 2 modulus 2 is 0. What does that mean? The easiest way to think about modulus is I use the pizza analogy. I think this really makes it very clear. So basically what you're saying is in the first half, I'm saying I have two slices of pizza. And I have two people with me. Okay? If I were to evenly distribute the pizza, so there's no one has any more pizza than the next person. How many slices of pizza do I have left? Well, if I have two slices of pizza and two people, I can give them both one, and I have zero slices of pizza left. Now, let's use a different equation just to make that clear. Let's say I have seven slices of pizza, and I have five people. Now, let's imagine that. I got seven pieces, five people. If I give each person one slice of pizza, I don't have enough to give each person another slice of pizza. So I still have two slices left. Let's make sure that logic makes sense. Oh, I gotta save it. That would make a difference. Save. So there you go. Seven modulus five equals two. Okay. So that means if I had seven slices of pizza distributed among five people, I'm gonna have two pieces left over. Okay. What is this used for? How is this useful? It's really useful for figuring out if a number is divisible by a number. So for example, 10 is divisible by five. If, that's the, if a number is divisible by another number, its modulus should be zero. Okay, so for a lot of times when we're trying to figure out, is this number divisible by this number, or is it an even number, so divisible by two, we'll use modulus. Okay, so let's see here. 10 modulus five should be zero because if I had five people, 10 slices of pizza, I can give each person two slices of pizza and have none left. It's evenly divisible. So let's run the code. And there you go, 10 modulus five is zero. Okay, once that makes sense, life's a lot easier and it's really, really useful. Okay, so those are your standard math operators. And then you also have um, this console. So let me make a variable, let num equal one. Okay, console.log num plus plus. So that means that's the increment operator. It adds one to num. Okay, and then there's also a decrement operator. Let me get all my semicolons in order. Okay, and the decrement operator is just two minus signs. Save. Okay, and then if I refresh, Okay, so here, let num on line six, line seven. Now, what happened here, okay, so see, you didn't see one go up. The reason being is because I put the plus plus after num, which means it printed out the num variable, which was still one, and then added one to it. And then the same thing with the decrement. Instead of subtracting one first, it printed out the variable and then subtracted it. So watch what happens if I were to put the plus plus first.
So when you're printing the variable or doing something with the variable, you want to be careful what order you put the operator in. So this should give me the result I was expecting. Yep. So see, we declare let num is 1. Then we increment it. Then you print it out num to the console. Then here we subtracted 1. And then, so do you want it? So basically, where do you have the increment or decrement operators to determine whether you increment first, then use the variable, or do you use the variable first and then increment it? If you're putting it into a function or something. Okay, so that's one reason. You got to be careful how you put stuff in the functions. A lot of times what people will do is that if they're going to increment it, they make that a separate command. They might do something like, so here we'll just make this num. And we'll make this num. So instead, what I'll do is num plus plus as a command. And then here I'll do num minus minus as a command. Save, refresh. Okay, and see nothing's changed. It's just now it's definitely adding the one, and then we're consoling the variable. You know, and again, a lot of this stuff just takes, you, you do it over and over again, you just get used to it. So I really recommend using websites like, great sites where you can practice coding are the following, hackerrank.com, codewars.com, and sololearn.com. I really recommend having accounts at all three and using their coding playgrounds to practice. What not another great place where you can just kind of code online when your computer's not nearby and you just need to code? Just go to REPL.it. Okay, there you can code in pretty much any language freely. It's pretty awesome. Okay, so let's go on to something else. Let's console, let's talk about Boolean and conditional operators. So a Boolean means true or false. Okay, so a variable can be true or false. So that's another type of variable. So you had strings, letters, and stuff. You had numbers, and now we have booleans. So I could actually create a variable, let name equal false. OK, let name equal false. Wonderful. And that means it's false. So I can use it as false. That's exciting. What's more interesting is when you actually use it to test stuff. So let's say, does, does 2 plus 2 and be careful here, because again, when you use one equal symbol, it means a sign, means you're putting something in the variable. We don't want to put something in the variable. I just want to know if two plus two equals four. Okay, and if two plus two equals four, if that's a true statement, then name will be true. So watch what happens when I console.log name. Put my semicolons. So this is the equality operator. There's actually two equality operators, but good practice is just to always use the three equal sign. They're used to, in almost all other languages, two equal signs kind of does the trick. Um, there's a little history with JavaScript on why there was two and then there was three and all this stuff, just use a three. Okay, so there's a lot of things in JavaScript that were originally kind of done because JavaScript was created sort of in a rush when it was first created, literally in 10 days. And then over the years it's evolved well, you don't want to break everybody's code from the past, so you add stuff that works better, but all the old stuff still kind of exists. So here, we can refresh it, and we see it comes out as true. Why? Because 2 plus 2 equals 4. That's a true statement, so it stores the Boolean of, of, of true. Okay, and you can, so that's one way we could do that. And I can also ask it, is it, is it greater than four? Is that true? I don't think so. I don't think two plus two is greater than four. So now it comes out as false. I can ask it, is it less than four? Which is also gonna be false. I can do less than or equal than, which should be true because it's still equal to four. Now it's true. I can do greater than or equal than to four. So that's true. But on top of it, what I can do is I can add ask multiple things. So I can say, hey, is this two plus two greater than or equal than to four? And is one 
less than three. So both sides have to be true because it's an and, meaning it needs both to be true. Both aren't true, it's false. So in this case, both are true, so it should still return true. So I have true. But let's say I make this greater than. One is not greater than three. So let's save that. So it should return false. False, because even though two plus two is greater than or equal than four, one is not greater than three. And it said and both have to be true. But if I make this or instead, so two lines like that equals or, so I'm saying this or this is true, it's true, it'll return true again. Nope, oh, gotta save it. And the way you can tell it's not saved, you see this little dot over here? That means it's not saved. So that's always a hint to you, oh, I should go back and save it. That's my problem. Okay, so I refresh. See, now it's true, because one of the two statements is true. And the last thing you can do is I can say, um, I can be not, so basically I can say, hey, does one not equal three? So if two plus two is greater than or equal than four, or one is greater than three, and let's make that an and again, because both should be true. So I want to test both. Then return true. So you can create really complicated uh, conditional statements here. Let me save. Okay, and then that's going to return true. Okay, so you can do a lot with your math operators and your conditional operators to store different numbers, get the numbers you need, um, to figure out what things are true and false, which is going to be useful when we start getting to more deeper into functions and conditional statements and loops and whatnot. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day and enjoy.